oral tradition over 1,000 years old, the Manas is one of the grandest epics ever told. 20 times longer than the Iliad and Odyssey told as one, it's the tale of the mythical Kyrgyz hero who everything won. The only son of a wealthy tribal lord, the vast lands of Central Asia did he hoard. By ten, his father's innumerable herds does he keep. By fifteen, the leader of forty tribes, distant lands does he reap. To the man-eating beasts of Alupi Khan does a lesson he teach. Atop his gray mare, he defeats the Kite and Kalmak, extending his reach. Throwing a mighty feast upon his triumphant return, for no greater hero do the Kyrgyz folk yearn. Kyrgyzstan, we're here to do some skiing. There were a few concerns with coming to Central Asia. I mean, they had a revolution in April of 2010, and that was kind of a big worry for us. I mean, I guess you can't really just rely solely on those. You have to go for personal experience, and that's kind of what we're here to do, is kind of get our own perspective on it. When I told most people I was coming to Kyrgyzstan, they asked me where, and they thought I was talking about Kazakhstan. They totally thought I was crazy, and who knows, we might be, it's minus 20, and we don't really have any idea where we are right now. It's, it's pretty. It's pretty yakky. Yeah. It is. It's like drinking a donut. <laughs> it is like drinking a donut. After trying yak butter tea in Bishkek, we headed east for six hours into the heart of the Tian Shan Mountains to connect with Ryan Kupal. Ryan has a backcountry ski touring year that is part of a plan to help develop tourism in Kyrgyzstan. I first came to Kyrgyzstan about four years ago with a good group of friends from back home in Colorado. We just spent, you know, about three months checking out different zones and uh, we were looking for the right spot to develop this program in. In Soviet times there was a pretty vibrant tourism industry here in Kyrgyzstan and uh, in 1991 the Soviet Union collapsed and uh, everything pretty much crumbled. So for the past couple of decades, you know, local people here in Kyrgyzstan have been, uh, you know, trying to figure it out, you know, figure out, uh, you know, what work opportunities are out there, and they've been trying to, you know, redevelop their country. You know, only now are Westerners, you know, starting to hear about this place, and uh, there's definitely, you know, promise uh, for this country. is Brian's taxi driver and he drives this beat up old Soviet military van. He drove us up into the mountains where we spent the night with a local Kyrgyz family before we hiked up into the yurt. level for sure definitely definitely gonna be very cool <laughs> huh. 
party at Jalpakatash. Party at Jalpakatash. <laughs> Jalpakatash is the name of this spot. The setup is simple, you know, it's designed as like a base camp for skiing. So we've got, you know, just a lot of sleeping area and then two central tables and a wood stove and a uh, small kitchen zone. Everything you need. down we felt a big huge settlement and moments later we saw four big pockets rip out one right on the face that we were headed to ski it's freaking scary out here right now for me i'm kind of blown away that like us relative to like our surroundings can actually have an effect on like what's happening over there and over there like in the grand scheme of things weight wise we're like a pin how do you sleep it to her lousy uh <laughs> Sketchy bordering on not so great. <laughs> but but, but skiable. Surface conditions are magnificent. You have to look on the bright side, right? It's all crystally. The tour is, as we Canadians say, an absolute beauty. Well, I've skied a lot of places. Um, skied all over South America and North America and Europe, the Alps, India. As the week went on, the stories grew and grew. But I think it pretty much peaked out when he told us how he was fishing, he was getting all seasick and whatnot, and he had basically <laughs> medicate himself against the seasickness. He uh, decided to catch a fish, cut it open, pull out a tart while it was still beating, and eat it. Part of my inspiration of being here definitely is Ryan. I really respect what he's done. What Ryan's done is begin to actually reintroduce winter tourism into this area. And so all the money goes boom, 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 directly into the, the Kyrgyz food chain. Ryan has done something greater than himself, and I don't think he realizes it. I don't know what skiing in Kyrgyzstan means, and it means big mountains. This entire experience of skiing out of the year has been, you know, it's definitely been one of a kind. I've been living down booties for a week, and I'm, I've never been so stoked. The people here are super warm and inviting, and that to me, it was kind of surprising, which is sad, but I guess we just live in a culture of fear where we're afraid of these places even though we don't know much about them. By the time we got our skis on our feet it seemed like it was really just a bonus to the entire thing and it's that entire full experience that really makes the trip special and that's what it's really all about.